everybody. Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. If you're new to the channel, I'm Franco. I'm a professional engineer with an absolute passion for fishing and making lures. And I make these videos so that I can share some of the things I've learned and kind of show you how an engineer approaches lure design and lure building. So I've got a, a, a mess in here and a, a half a dozen projects going on at one time. And I have to say, when I started this channel, I really didn't count on the workload of trying to get a video out every week. My average video takes me eight hours to edit and takes probably almost as much to plan and film. And I'm saying all that in advance of a little bit of an apology because this video is going to be a quick review of the aluminum rowboat conversion into a bass boat. So uh, what I'm going to cover is where I am right now, what's left to do, and some of the challenges to these last steps. It's been a little bit difficult getting this uh, EVA foam deck down, getting it to stay down, and being careful with all my cuts so I had enough to cover everything. So overall, I think it looks really good. Um, some of the challenges in getting uh, the EVA foam to go down and go down well uh it has been that i th i think the uh adhesive on this stuff was not was subpar it wasn't the best and so i kind of added some 3m spray on uh contact cement that's the industrial stuff and it seems to, to have helped i did it back here and everything's down and flat on the bow portion i'm still having a couple of issues with some edges not wanting to stay down but I'll, I'll cure that. Here's a perfect example. I'll cure that with some heat and some additional uh, contact cement underneath it. Let me show you some of the deck details. First of all, I've uh, installed the transom knees. And this uh, really originally was part of the structure of the boat. It actually supported the transom quite a bit, but the boat is so much stiffer now that this really is more of a beauty plate, even though it's pretty ugly. So I've done that on both sides. And here, these holes are where the uh, old cleats were. And I'm going to put some uh, black plastic cleats. I'm going to make a, a base plate for it, rivet it in, and then have those in um, on top of that base plate and it'll it'll look a lot cleaner than it does right now. Here you see uh, a little beauty plate that I made for my bilge hose and for my anchor light fitting. But to be able to get uh, the hose barb in a location and situated where I can actually do this with the hose uh, was a bit of a challenge so I had to make this custom fitting. This other deck fitting is a connection for 110 for the battery charger that's below this. Of course, we've got our deck scuppers, drains. There's one back here too. It's difficult to see. So, and I've installed all the slam latches, more deck drains, and one in that corner, and the center hatch for access to sort of the bilge area. And you can see that my uh, hinges are nice and flush. Uh, even though they show, uh, they're nice and flush so your feet won't be uh, stepping on them. And then here's the seat pedestal. Rock solid, set in a plate of metal with these bolts threaded into the rivet nuts. Uh, this is rock solid, really, really tough. And then here, under here, protected and out of the way, is wiring coming up for uh, the bow lights. And this four peak, this is part of the original boat i've been doing some experimentation with polishing it as you can see it looks kind of uh, muddled up uh, but i've got it riveted in with some heavy duty uh, large flange rivets along with the beauty plate on the front which makes it look a bit like a tank 
but I don't want this rattling, which it used to do back in the day. And this hole here is a Scotty mount uh, that I've got to put back in. This is the starboard running light and the port running light. All right, so let me show you what's inside uh, the actual hatches. Starting in the back, this is my bilge. And you can see I've got my battery switch for two batteries. That's the battery charger. I've got my plumbing that is, is not completely connected right now because I'm leaving it open so that the, the uh, hull will drain by itself. Um, I've got a float switch, 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump, and of course the bilge hose going out through the deck up here. I've also installed these spring struts. They're stainless steel and they actually do a good job and they're super simple. This and the one on the other side is just a battery box. And the center is my switch panel that contains a 12 volt plug and USB connectors. This whole panel slips out for servicing so that I can re replace any blown fuses. I even have a little packet in here, so I always have some if I need it. The electrical is all mounted on the PVC and not connected to any of the aluminum, so I'm sure I don't have to worry about uh, electrolysis or any kind of weird short. And you can see I've uh, placed extrusions on all these lids so that they're nice and stiff when you stand on them. This is just access to the plumbing. This center port, this big one, is my live well slash cooler. Here is the access to the forward electrical stuff and the live well pump, which is right here. You can see I had to make a custom fitting. Plumbing coming up, I've got a quick disconnect here so everything can be disconnected and serviced when I need to. And I've got a ground bus right here, again, connected to PVC and not to any aluminum. These two will be uh, tackle storage. And here you can see I already have tackle storage boxes. And then finally, my bow hatch, which contains the wiring for the trolling motor. There's a little light in here. All the, all the compartments really have little lights in them. And I envision using this uh, for maybe some tools and my foot control for my trolling motor. This is gonna be my mounting platform for my trolling motor up on the bow. It's a couple of layers of half inch PVC sheet reinforced with aluminum angle. So it's super rigid. And the idea is that it'll go up here where the trolling motor will be easy to access and out of the way and won't be in the way of any of the hatch lids. On the transom, I've reinstalled the old handles. I've also put on this transom extension and I made this from an old, um, kicker motor bracket. This is a galvanized uh, spare tire bracket uh, from a trailer. Again, through bolted with stainless steel and backed with uh, good heavy aluminum plates. I gotta figure out a way to get this thing to back down to the lake. When I brought it up here, all I did was tie a rope to it, tie the other end of the rope to my tractor, and I just dragged it up here. But I can't do that now. It's got a nice paint job on it. Next and final video for this project, I'm going to show you the last bits of construction. I'll videotape the splash as I put it in the lake and I'll go over all the costs and all the materials. So hopefully this video will hold you over. I know I had a lot of questions on where I was on it, but if you have more questions, certainly ask them and I'll try to include all the answers in the last video. Thanks for watching. If you like these kind of videos, let me know. And if you haven't subscribed, certainly subscribe. See you on the next video.